This is the Levels Network. I'm Justin Hordorp, joined by the Triple OG, Whittemoo Mason and OG. Let's get straight into it, mate. And I want to put a bow on this now. Because the news of the week has been Kenty. <laughs> and I've got an unpopular opinion for no, you. No, I want to hear this. I, yeah. thought we put it, I thought we put it to bed. No, no, no. We want to keep dragging on because, <laughs> you know, in 360, on 360, when Kenty's there, he doesn't just hammer him for a day. They get two, they get three episodes. And for that reason, I'm going to throw something at you. All right. I'm going to miss Paul Kent because I think he's done, right? Yeah. And this is why I'm going to miss him. Uh when I watch 360, I don't watch it religiously. If, if anything, I only really watch the clips, right, for the most part, yeah. like with, with a lot of social media or shows that I watch. For me, 360, I watch it for entertainment. I don't watch it to, to get, to get um, some tips off coaching. Exactly. Like I'm not watching it for an educational piece. I watch other podcasts. Um, I watch other forms of shows. It is um, entertainment. It, it is entertainment, yeah. right? So when I think of like the best TV shows, the best movies, you got to have a villain. And mm-hmm. Paul Kent, uh, even though I disagreed with like ninety percent of what he always said, yeah. it one it gave us content <laughs> for our yeah. show for most part because we play off it a yeah. lot, a lot obviously. And uh, and if you take it. I've always taken Kendi like I've never really taken him seriously, so therefore I don't get offended mm. by a lot of the stuff. Or you know, when he says outlandish shit, it's just like yeah, I know that's just is. you're the same probably, yeah. right? That's just Kenty being Kenty. Um, so I think he's going to be missed on that show in particular because I've been watching it the last couple of the days, and I, and Jam is doing a great job, and Jam is probably the best candidate to be on it. Mm-hmm. But if you start breaking it down, I sort of saw Kenty as like the Donald Trump. Of 360, yeah. and if you're looking at the next villain, the next villain's mm. got to be because Jammer and Braith are both very, they're in, very pretty astute fair. fucking people. Yeah, and they're pretty well thought out. Like when I watched Jammer's takes, I was like, yeah, he's spot on. But that's why I like watching the buy round for Jammer, right? Mm. And and Braith was always that guy to sort of, you know, center everyone out and make sure like at the end of the day there were some decent opinions yeah. chucked in with some rubbish, yeah. and like. Buzz is the obvious candidate to take over and be Kenty's role, but you know who he is for me? He's Biden. <laughs> like it's when I up there, Buzz. When I when I watch Buzz, I'm like, yeah, it's he says tone is boring, and some of the shit just goes flies over your head. Just so. he says some dribbly stuff. Yeah. He's probably getting a little bit it's too old, old for man. it. Like you know, like I sort of worry about his health. Like, and that's not even taking the piss. That's just like no. he's getting to that age, right? So. Those are how I always viewed those mm. two, and and this is not like politics aside. Like I'm not. Yeah. I'm not up to date with with the politics. I'm just the perception and the and the aura yeah. and the aura that they bring. So uh, there's going to be a part of me that misses Paul Cannon. Do you think like now? I think so too. Do you think he's done? He sh- yeah he will be yeah um, unless unless the boys the boys club just stick up for him massively and there's a good chance that happens. Eh, who cares? But he's lost all credibility. That's the thing. The thing that he had before the fuck up the allegedly thing the alleged thing that happened before. Yep. He had a lot of credibility. Everyone's thinking like he knows a lot of shit, everything like blah, blah, blah. So once you get caught doing two things like this, mm. credibility is lost. So therefore you watch that show now, everyone's fucking laughing at you. But That's di- what happens. Like that's, well, You saw it when he come back. Yeah. And it's like, it ain't the same. Yeah, he, he didn't it, have that same vigor, did that. Yeah, he does. It's, and then if he comes back from this, it's – if everyone's going to laugh at him. Even in the whole meantime, like, I want to sort of drop this whole peak, I think, because I don't fucking hate the bloke. I just thought it was a funny thing. Yeah, if so that yeah. happened to an average dude yeah. and they filmed it, it'd be funny. It was just funnier because it was PK. And look, and this, I agree with you, right? With the yeah. DV one, the DV case yeah. was behind closed doors. No. no one's, there's no footage of it. There's, it was kept in the court. So really, we, we never really had a strong opinion no. on that and we, we shouldn't. Didn't comment on it. We, we shouldn't, didn't. right? But this one, we seen on camera, and here's my point with it, right? I think he's going to get sacked as well. Mm. Uh, which is whatever. Like it doesn't really bother yeah. me, but I was just, you know, I thought – He can not fucking work on levels, podcast. Here's your job for Hey, you, there you PK. go. That was going to be my next point. You come and sit here. I think, the body science I, I think he goes the Tucker Carlson <laughs> route and goes independent. <laughs> yeah. With, with some sort of that. form. Yeah. And you know what he should do? He should own who he is. I think he will. Be real, man. Yeah. They, they, they understand. If you're, just, if you're just one of the boys, PK – They'll understand your shit, man. Mm. Start your own fucking little lane and then do your own thing and you'll get more credibility like that. Don't come out and say it was a setup and I was only joking. Mm. Come on, you're still fucking lying, mate. Oh, is that what he said? Yeah, that was his comment. Oh, I didn't say that. Fuck, just own it. Own it. Own what you're doing. Be real. People will respect you a lot more 
than sitting in a fucking ivory tower throwing darts all day and then just going doing this shit and then getting caught and then, you know, just be you, mate. Yeah, 100%. Because if that was a player, right, who'd done it and they would have talked about it on 360 for sure, but we would have just gone – uh, give him a couple of weeks and, and he's back. Like mm. you, you wouldn't want to see a, a player sacked for that, but it's a different position. And when he's so critical of players, that's the that's the the um, the main issue yeah. with it is the hypocrisy yeah. of being, you know, in the position that he is and being yeah. critical of people. That's why people and now he's see, got people wanted to see this. Yeah, and it was eventually going to happen. People because there's a lot of it. things going along. You know, get some help and get get your feet, get your fucking self back on your feet. Get going with life. No one's fucking rooting against you all the way. No one wants to see you fail that much. I think well, a lot of people, people are. Like, I don't. I don't. I, I don't personally either. don't. I nah, wouldn't wish it upon anyone. No, nah, either. And I'm just like, just do your own thing. Get back on your feet. Get some help. Yep. Fucking do your own thing. That's it. That's all the advice I'd give you. Did you see him get interviewed last night? I seen like Channel 7 were one of the main ones that were over there and they interviewed him. He looked like he was in a bad way. He's in the horrors. Yeah, you know, you fucking apparently punched some lungs. And and lungs and <laughs> awful. Yeah. All right. Well, there you go. People always, you know, we got, I get so, especially on the yeah. levels, you wouldn't see it, Mace, because Mace is on the levels count, but people, you know, are just at us about this poor Kent stuff. So there's my final opinion on it. Um, Mace has had his final say and let's get on with what we normally talk about which is news, proper news in and around the game around players, around coaches and breaking down some of the team lists um, had this one from Agent Zero Mace Hey Mason Scope, I found your podcast this season and absolutely love it. Question, how do I get my hands on some Levels merch to rep you guys in the burbs? So me and you, both mm. organically, well, I knew yeah, the I question was coming. the hoodie. You just wore the hoodie. <laughs> um, we did these last year. We sort of just got the timing wrong because these are we really- we got hoodies out in the summer. What do you mean? September. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I want to sit down. Let's sit down as a team yeah. and let's think about some some merch ideas. It'll be uh, probably different, you know, yeah, different level to this. Obviously, we'll, we'll get the timing right, whether we do a summer drop or a spring drop or, or whatever it may be. But I think the people want some merch. Yeah. Uh, so let us know if you if you want to see some merch and what sort of merch you want to see in the comments as well. Uh, I want to thank everyone who has jumped on of late. The subscriptions are absolutely flying. Off the back of the Kenty uh, clip that went viral – sorry, that's Kenty again uh, – 700 new followers on Instagram. <laughs> that that clip, mate, went everywhere. Yeah. I had all my mates were sending it to me, sharing it in the WhatsApp group. Uh, you absolutely nailed that. And uh, everyone who's been following us on Instagram and, and the journey, it all helps. They're great for our numbers. So continue to subscribe on Apple and Spotify. Shout out to our partners, BSC here as well yep. with the Grouse Protein bars teamed up with Violet Crumble. But let's get into it, mate. Got some uh, YouTube replies and this one, this one threw me off as I was talking about it, right? And this is the last time we're talking about Geordie Barrett, I swear and we're over, right? <laughs> we're still on him. Yeah. I still don't know what Barrett we're talking about either. <laughs> yeah. So Tristan goes – this is a couple of them. Tristan goes, scope in his maths. He's 23, 24, so not 26 because oh, – oh. I said he was born in 2000, right? I know, what a- but then I said he was 26 and it's 2024. The semantics, so the reason I stuffed it up and I thought about it at the time, um, I mis, um, misread what Jordy had said. So he wasn't born in 2000. So I knew he was like 26 or 27, right? So that's what was stuck in my head. But when I read it out, I read that he was born in 2000 and then he went to Ireland. He was born – Two years previous, he moved okay. to Ireland in 2000 right. when he was three and four. So he's currently, uh, yeah, 26, 27. <laughs> he was 27. You. There you go. That's it. No Thank more Geordie you. Barrett shit. No more. I'm, he's in Ireland. He fucking lived there. He he's lived in Ireland back. for two or three years. He's a gun. That's enough. He's not going to Camp Munster. He's going to Leinster. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. He's up. All right, let's go. And this is another one. Uh, based off the, the uh, 1,500,000 uh, <laughs> minimum wage discussion we had about the Panthers, uh, Itchy Nats threw this one out. Dry field from the Super League to play alongside Cleary. Mad running game and has X, X Factor. Thoughts? Uh, and the other one is RCG back to the Panthers a year or two and they get young bucks for days. No need to worry. That's mm. a good point. They will de- for sure develop them. Um, just, uh, just one on that, I think Jai Field would be a great candidate to come back. He'd be like a Luke Metcalf, yeah, sort of nice. six model, yeah. I think, in this day and age. And I think he would be a great pairing. Unfortunately, he's got a four-year extension with Wigan until <laughs> the end of 2027. In saying that, contracts yeah. don't mean shit these days. No. And um, what they do have in the UK is a thing called a transfer fee. So I remember there was a, a guy – 
that I was playing with Mace at Wakefield, he was an absolute weapon. Tom Johnston, his name was, mm. had a couple of really bad knee injuries and teams were looking at him. But they slapped this 50,000, 100,000 K yeah. um, tag it on him. Them because Mate, and because the, and they sign like four to five year deals over yeah. there on For fuck all. R- average money and Tommy couldn't get out of it. In the end now he's probably missed his window but he would have been – I'm telling you right now, he's – I don't say this lightly mm. – the best finishing winger that I yeah. played with in my entire career, and I played I with some. Tommy Johnson. I played with some uh, really good wingers. I'm thinking if I'm if I'm in my twenties, right, early twenties, I'm, I'm, I'm in I'm in the halves, right. Yep. I'm fucking coming to Australia. Just get me on a roster, yeah, and then just let me back myself. Like Lewis Dodd from yeah, St. Helens. Just get here, mate. Just yep. get here. Get under some good tutelage, some good coaches. Learn the game. Learn the NRL game. It's a different game over there compared to here. And just get get doctrinated into this. Mm. You know, there we've got some world class players over there that are yeah. just happy to sit up in the north of England. You know that they're very content. It's very content, mate. Yeah. If you want to be great, you got to get over here. Yeah. And I think just with this now, with yeah. the NRL, you're talking million dollar contracts and generational money you can make. Yep. You know, they all fucking come from they're tough bastards up there, man. Fuck yeah. The pommies are working class. They're just like us down here. And um, yeah, if I was one of that, even forwards or anything, front rollers and and, and halves, man. If I'm at the top of my game in that. I'm getting over as a young kid. Yeah, and yeah. I think having Sam Burgess and all the couple of coaches over there, they'd be they'd be giving that advice too. If there's any young um, kids at Warrington or anything like, it'd be like, get to South or get to here, get to the NRL, and it could easily be done. But they need to be want they need to want to come over here. Yeah, they've got to have the want. Yeah, yeah. Like Georgie Williams come over here. He could still dominate over here, but he can't get out of his contract again. Yeah, he'd be one that you'd be he, he could play NRL easily. Yeah, we'll get to Sam Burgess and yeah, coaching in a bit, yeah. obviously, with the news of Jason Demetrio. We're also going to discuss a couple of proposed rule changes that I've seen which will help prevent yeah. concussion uh, that are quite interesting. Um, we've also got the retirement of Luke Keary. Uh, someone's got the tinfoil hat on, um, but we'll talk about Kez's career. He's Probably don't need a tinfoil hat to know that he's retired because of that head knocks and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, we'll get to it. We'll get to it as we go. But um, just before we quickly move off, RCG, he's off contract at the end of 2025. He's an interesting How one. How old would he be? He would Surely be, be near 30. He'd be close to 30, yeah. He'd be 31, Maybe, maybe a little the, bit, Maybe a little maybe bit over. Regan. Still got some good footy to offer. Yeah, he does. Still Most likely. A lot of minutes. He's, he's, he's a lot better than what he was when he was at Penrith. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a lot more complete. He runs, you know, like he's still got a lot of um, – a lot more football than him. It's just up to it's up to big RCG. If he goes back to Penrith, that'd be a good, good little thing for him. He's a representative. And Penrith, where's that gone now? Oh, he's, I think he's about thirty now, isn't he? He's got to be. Yeah, because I think he's my middle brother's I age. Played so against my... him, two thousand fifteen. When yeah. I was a manly, he would have been the young 21, 22 year old coming through. Maybe even younger. That was twenty fifteen. So I must be spelling his name wrong. Regan. Oh, it's with an A. There we go. That's the problem. I was just chucking in R E. He is. <laughs> Rougen, he's 30 Kidd. he's 30 so yeah, 32. one more year he'll be 32 yeah. still plenty of time plenty number two um, year deal finish up Penrith yeah I feel like he's the sort of guy that's like proper indoctrinated indoc- indoctrinated indoctrinated is that the right word is that the right okay. yeah. anyway with the paramedic culture and that leader leadership group yeah. like him junior Mitchie Gutho they've been there for five plus years I think if Regan was to move on it would have to be because they've got a new coach and a new like that. and a change in it. Well, then he, he would. I think he'd. He was a part of the start of that whole um, Penrith thing, and then they flicked a lot of them, and he mm. was one of those guys. Mm. And then they've look how much success they've had. Yep. And then uh, all those guys are nearly all gone, and he'll probably nearly end up back there. I reckon. Yeah. Okay. I think so. Like he's a Penrith boy, man. Yep. They yeah, always want to go back home. I know Parramatta's close, but like he went to Hill Sports with my with my dad so and my brother. So he's proper brothers. Penrith, eh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So like, That's just say if that door opens up and pa- Parramatta's window is done, Penrith window, Penrith's window is still sort of like top four ish. Mm. I'm going back. There's a pretty good chance Penrith going window back. is going to be top four ish. <laughs> <laughs> but like you know what you're going to get with yeah. all these guys here, and they're going to they're going to need a um, a senior player in the front row, and he's going to fit that mold. Really well, and I think he's changed. He's not that young kid that he was at Penrith, you know, like you know, seven or eight years ago. He's changed. He's a Australian rep. He's a New South Wales rep. He's a leader. He's a father. He's all these things. So mm. it's probably the right time to get him back because mm. I think when he was there, it's his wild times. That's what I'm hearing. Yeah, like that was a different culture yeah, back different then culture when he was there. It wasn't and... the winning culture that they got now. Yeah, it wasn't set. So I think he can take whatever he's learnt there, bring it back, and yep. just 
become part of that that leadership group over there. you would be a great addition. All right, mate, uh, let's get into some questions. Uh, this one is from Doilo. Well, boys, big Sharky's friend from Dunboyne, Ireland. You. Dunboyne. Oh. Apologies if I've uh, – I love it when we just get these ones from overseas, though. They always get me. And I think now people <laughs> – I reckon They're people, trying to throw names at you so you can't explain them. No, I you think can't. people were throwing like locations at me willy-nilly just so they get their question read. <laughs> Been listening for the past couple of months Young after boy. coming across the TikToks, after hearing Horro's Latrell Origin tape. Because we're big on TikTok. Have you considered rolling Origin lineup segments or would you both be more fixed on your 17s regardless of form? Love the, boy, love the pod, boys. Keep it up. Up. Up, Cronulla. Yeah, so yeah. the rolling origin lineups, um, Mace, she you sent yours into us yep. last night. Do you want to – let's let's have a – Do you want me to read mine out? Yeah, or do you want to save it for – I was going to say maybe we save it for review, give it one more week, and then we roll it out on review. I think that would be the best time right, to do whatever. it. And then that way we can um, – one, we get an extra week to mm-hmm. see if there's any injuries or any form. And then basically we're judging it off, you know – It's yeah, fluid, right? It's yeah. fluid. It's – can We're we? able to move. Yeah, we can move. It's, fluid. A, it's a rolling origin lineup. It's like Stephen A's list. It's yeah. fluid. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's it, yeah. Change it. All right, Doilo, we'll get that going for you on Monday. So uh, it won't be our final origin lineups. It's just how we're feeling on Monday with the potential to change yeah. as we get going. It took me a while to get through like New South Wales last night. I did my head in. I couldn't I, think of benchies and like yeah. who to start the prop with pain and like our back row because of Cam, Yoey. Fuck, I was like – Doing my head in. I think I'm sold on pretty much my Queensland lineup is you know, set. Who, who plays left back row for New South Wales? Who plays on the right? Uh, yeah. Does it, like, Ola Kwatu come off the bench? Does he? That's what I'm fucking with. Okay. Even Angus Crichton's put himself back in that p- equation now. Yep. That's what we call a little teaser. Oh, so, yeah. That's what was my head last night. I was like, who is going to play left side? Who was right? Because Liam Martin and Ola Kwatu are both right siders all day. And I think Liam can switch, but it, and then Cam Murray's my left back rower sometimes. And then I think I want then I want to put him block and I want to put fucking Yo at front row. Yep. You know what I mean? <laughs> then put Jakey on the bench. I don't know, because Yoey is when he's more direct, when I was talking about the locks last week. About like with his ball playing, just be more direct because he gets the ball a lot. He runs really good lines. He can just dummy and go. Mm. When he done that in the like game two and three, a lot more effective. It was just game three. Fucking, or game three, right? Yep. So he fucking goes, okay, I understand Origin now. Yeah. It ain't Penrith. Yep. Good so point. So I'm like, he's that th- – hey, a lock's a third prop. That's all it is. You can't say he can't start in an Origin. Yeah. He can start in an Origin at prop or come off the bench as, you, as another prop. How much easier was it to pick the Queensland team though, eh? Queensland, just, I, I, just 20 players there. I'd put slash two along, slash coats, yeah. fucking Cobo, centre, wing. Yeah. Uh. yeah. <laughs> and that's no ponger. Oh, yeah, I know. I did struggle with the fall pack a little bit. Yeah. A little bit because of, co- of the Cotter Carrigan. The injuries too. Yeah, Cotter Carrigan. You got Lindsay Smith there. You got a few. Yeah, it was, it was a bit all over the shop. I didn't. It was, there wasn't Lindsay no. Lindsay Smith? Was it, no, Lindsay Collins. Lindsay Collins. Lindsay, um, there wasn't no like fucking full on. I want Carrigan at lock. I would have Nanai and I would have Fafita. Yep. Then I'd have Collins and I wanted another prop. Save it. Just, save it for next yeah, week. Oh, no, I'm just saying that's what choosing. I was going through. Yeah. I said, who would I want to pick as another prop? And then go, you're probably going to have to put Cotter there because he did that last year. Put Carrigan back. I don't know. It's fucking weird. All right, mate. Um, you Did you get to watch the SG Ball Grand Final last I week did, too? Yeah. All right. This one's from Cameron Postolovsky. Willie, what's your thoughts on the Dragons SG Ball Grand Final team? They beat your Bulldogs 40 to 18. Some elite forwards in there. Mm-hmm. Three of them being Australian schoolboys. They really dominated the too. game. Pardon? Big Tongan boys Big as well. Tongan, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. South Coast Tongan boys, yeah. eh? What was your thought on the Dragons team? Did you see anyone in particular? I'm probably not going to know names. No, no. I don't, he know, said I don't know their names. There's three of them that are playing Australian schoolboys. 11. And what about your boys? How were they obviously 40 to 18, at but that, at um, that age, yep. when you're 17, just turn 18, and when you're 18, just turn 19, there's a big difference, right? Mm. In uh, maturity and huge strength. And they had a lot of boys 18, 19. No excuse. Yep. No excuse. We got, a lot, we got a lot of young kids that just turned 18, right? Well, that is a genuine excuse. It is. Then. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying, well, they got out, out physical. They're yep. fucking big and strong and fast. They're huge. Yep. The fucking number 10 there is as big as me. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's athletic. He's got a skill set. I'll see if I can get the, the line. 11, um, the 11 is, was my pick. Their back row, the 11, he would be a future first grader. Okay. I'm easily, that. like in a year or two. SG Boar. It's SG Boar, right? Yeah. And the prop, if he fixes up a few things, if he gets more aggressive, more leg speed, but he has the prototype build. I was saying to Ogre and Roy after the game, I was like, look at number 10 there. I said, six foot five, probably about 117 kilos. Oh, he fucking, looks huge. So yeah. this guy got uh, player of the match, Jacob Halangahu. Halangahu. But it doesn't have the, uh, the list here. 
Let's see if I can get the list up somewhere. It's Loco, his name is. Oh, there's a Loco. I another call him Loco. Loco. No, his name is Loco. Oh, Helen yeah. Gahu, I think his name is. I'm not Mate, sure. Jacob Loco. Don't I, I think he, <laughs> But I was just saying, they um they look more physical, but those are the 10 and 11. Oh, were here my, we go. Were my picks. Okay, I got the team list. So number 10 was Loco Jr., Pacifici, yeah. Pacifici, Tonga. Yeah. And number 11, yeah, he got man of the match, Jacob Helen Gahu. Helen Gahu, yeah. He's so he was He's like a little David Fafita, wow. if I could compare him to that. Yeah, he looks like it. I David seen the picture. Fafita is like probably about six foot three, maybe. I reckon he's a big guy. Yep. This guy's height. probably six one. Yep. But a little pocket rocket. But, but he could just, I mean, I'm not sure how that transfers straight into like NRL, but if he learns the pace of the game, Getting early ball, I like it because he gets early ball and just tramples over him. But you, you're going up against better defenses. But yeah. they have they have the they have the talent to really push for first grade, especially at St George as well. That's if I'm recruiting now, if I'm in in, in recruitment of any club, that's my ideal size. I want six one to six three. Yeah. If you get a, a, a genetic a, beast like yourself or so like Tino a, or whatever, there, that, yeah, that yeah, yeah, probably yeah. probably a little bit more ripped. 105 kilos, ripped. ripped, solid. Yeah, um, plays big minutes, gets yeah. early ball, left edge. Um, got a good footwork, uh, big minutes. As I said, like good, good work ethic. Well, that's you know what I mean. That's, that's always that's your thing why, with the young why, poly you know, kids. He doesn't just sit. Yeah, exactly. Like yep. the big number ten's probably got a little bit of work to do. Big loco, he needs to be more aggressive. Like, and he play, he made some really good runs in that. But like defensively, yeah, defensively he was like he just he just just needs to go up a little. Probably like a Paseca, right? Yep. yep. Okay. Just needs to fucking really model his game around a, a Tino or Payne Haas. Mm. Just look at those guys and go. I need that. Just quickly on that, they're all the same really. Like I'd, I'd say probably Tino's got the most aggression mm. out of all the boys, yeah. but those big boys who play big minutes and carry the ball, they don't, they don't really know. whack anyone like years past, do they? Nah, nah. But just, they're really – um, being effective, man. It's effective. Yeah. They're really effective as big guys. Yeah. I think – and it's sometimes, I guess, you know, when you're a big body and you, you get all these post-contact meters, mm. it must take so much juice out of yeah, you. Man. All these big You're not really boys. trying to go out and use all that energy nah. to try and kill everyone. no. Nah. Where like in our era, the pocket it was all about team. that, yeah. right? It's just about that first like, fuck, 10, 15 minutes of like just flying out. It's just Ruben Wicky and shit coming yeah. after you, yeah. Adrian Morley, yeah. Morley's Talises, Petros and yeah. all that. Like just, as I said, like talked about before, like your head's on a swivel. Like where the fuck, where did that come from? Yeah. Getting hit about three times, like bang, 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 shoulder, back, neck. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's all about that first contact because people – I think they mistake it because they've seen such big hits, like just say 15 years ago. But you're getting hit three times in different areas. It's just as hard as that first hit, right? Yeah. And because the runners are so strong as well, it's hard to hit people on their back yeah. cleanly. Yeah. Like Stevie Maddow used to just flog you and you're done. Yeah. The hitters are out of the game, the proper hitters, right? Yeah. You've got a few of them like Victor and that. They've had to peel it back. Yeah, he has. Because of the fucking head, the head knocks and everything. Like, so everyone's just like, make the tackle, the first contact on the ball, Get your underhooks in. The third one hits here, different real estate, and the next one gets legs. And, the and then peels the game, out. Hey. That's what I'm saying. The guy just ki kills legs and then he fucks off and he's got to pick which way to go. So it's like a fucking well-oiled machine if you've got a good defensive system like Penrith, like the Broncos have now, like yep. Penrith have. You know what I mean? Like, it, you know, they just um, – you know. So when you think about Penrith, they're probably the best hitting team, but they don't really go chasing the contact, do nah, they? they? They hold the line. They, they, and if you run into Fisher-Harris, Liotta – Kenny, Kenny, they'll lick you with technique, yeah. but they don't go chasing it real. Unless yeah. you're like real, like no. if you're wedged in the corner, then mm. they'll come at you. Yeah. But if you think about some of the hits where like the, the Moses Liotta one on trail, mm. it's more the attacker on yeah. the back if fence. You, if you're looking for the, if you're looking to run at someone, they'll lick get you. It, they'll get you. Yeah, and that's the only team that'll get you. I think Penrith's got a bunch of hitters. Pen, yeah. like because you got Fish, Liotta, and Kenny. Yo, he's pretty good defender, but he ain't like those three. Nah. They hit different, right? They Who's hit two. Who's number two? There's not a clear cut number I think, two. I think uh, Roosters are up there with, with, Vic, with when Vic goes up and, and cheese because they have yep. got that body height. Yep. And then if you and get Angus a, and, then, and Lindsay Collins goes. Yep. And Jared, when they, when they Jared. Yeah, and Jared leads away, yeah, they've probably. got that in them. They've yep. got some proper hitters in them. Then yep. defensive base. Don't forget about that. Yeah, Don't worry sure. about the sixty points we talked about before. Um, Brisbane can go get it sometimes, but then you got Walters. Because mm. you can spot him up. Because he's he's def and his defense has gotten way better. Yeah. Way better. But he's still a spot in my eyes. Yeah. Because yeah, Jensen, hit, Jensen hits good, Payne Haas hits good, and Carrigan hits good. Well, you don't want to run at anyone a, else. Of course yeah. you're going to get it, Billy. Yep. And I feel sorry, but that's what happens, right? Yeah, just remember our four, Roy, Ogre, myself, Corey Hughes. Who are you going to get at? 
Yeah. You're going to try and get it Corey Hughes all the time. But he would, he would but he'd have he's nugget. Mitch Kenny. And, and Adam, he was yeah, Mitch Kenny. Adam, and Adam Perry, but they'll they'll get you. Yeah. So you, it's all middles are fucking – they're the hardest workers on the team. And I, but Penrith's the hardest hitters. I watch how they hit. Yes. But it's so – their line speed into defense and how they work so well together. Yeah. And it's like a well, well-oiled well machine. That's it's, like Pen, it's like Melbourne when it was back in the day, man. That's what separates them. They've also got – like obviously they can hit, but they've got really good technique yeah. as well. They stay tight, really. They yeah. stay really tight. Their detail – marker everything is worked fucking to perfection i reckon they were a part of the leg pulling ch- uh, rule change yeah, to change to get you like just you say remember you how they facing s- that way they want you facing that way melbourne started that which ripping yeah. your head the other way they would stick and then like they'd get you yeah, and they'd really hold in the contact and they'd pick the leg up twist around yeah. slow death take yeah. you to the ground but melbourne and started all that shit, yeah they mate. were the OGs. Melbourne started all yeah. that shit they're like Melbourne Storm with the contact. Like Melbourne yeah. Storm, like even though it was frustrating playing Melbourne, there was like once Matt Ruhr and the OGs had moved yeah. on, but like then they I'm started of, getting you like in numbers, man. Like yes, attacking numbers. Like we were the we were the guinea pigs for the fucking chicken wings, the crunches, and all that sort of shit, right? Yeah. Because just say just. Wind the clock back to about 2002, three, four, five. No one knew about wrestling back then, eh? No one, because – and what was the most common denominator was big physical sides. Penrith were big physical, Bulldogs, same as the Roosters, the Warriors were like that. Poor old Melbourne just lost all those hitters and they just got all these young up-and-coming guys. Yeah, they were a lot of team, weren't they? They get a guy called John Donahue who was Mm. training fucking Randy Couture Mm. over in the UFC, comes over and he's their wrestling coach. Yeah. Shout out to John Donahue. He's a fucking great human. Changed the game. game. Changed fucking game, but – to their to theirs like to to favor Melbourne yep. smaller team but would find you in all these remember fucking Matt Guyer yeah little fucking come in and cr- give you a massive crush attack and fuck off back to the wing yeah and then you wouldn't know where it happened yeah you wouldn't know where all these things would get your fucking chicken wing so the ref didn't know what was going on you got players like me getting up blowing up ogre everyone all other teams getting up going the fuck is happening yeah you're uncomfortable this to be in a crush attack yeah it's worse with no policing yeah. No policing, right? You're getting a little crush attack and people go, oh my God, look, get me off. I'm going to fucking HIA. Yeah. You just have to wear it. Players now know they if they know. accidentally get in that position then they pull out. But, but back the in the day- know, But the refs the yeah. refs know now. They go on to wrestling sessions and all that sort of shit. So we didn't we didn't know what the fuck was going on. The refs didn't have a clue. We're like, he's fucking twisting my arm. They're like, the fuck are you talking about, mate? Yeah. They didn't know. We're going, at the scrums, we're talking. So what the fuck is going on? Like to Robbie Kearns and that big Bobby Cass. Said, the fuck is that? I said, next one's getting a punch in the fucking head. That's the sort of talk that was at scrums. How long did, until the referees figured it out? You Six since about four, 2006, 2007? Three, four we years. We started, yeah, so we started <laughs> wrestling in 2006. Yeah. No one gave the fuck for that long because Melbourne weren't winning. We was, yeah. They were still getting yeah. knocked out in the prelims from yeah, us, okay. all the roosters and that. Then they hit the fucking, then they got into the grand final in 2006. Yep. Then they fucking been the best history. team ever. Yep. But they kept ev- the evolution of the wrestling, mate. It was fucking crazy how yeah. they got into little tactics and stuff just to throw you off. And it fucking did. And then they just got smarter and smarter and smarter. And they're still doing it. They're still the best at it. People were trying to copy them as they were advancing. Yeah, we were, so we started wrestling in 2006. That was our first team. And we just thought, we hate Melbourne because they made us wrestle. Mm. You know how fucking bad wrestling is Worse. for the game? Worse. Now the evolution of the game is all about the contact, right? Mm. So I need you run at me, I'm bang, I've got the ball is the main thing. Yep. And then the other guy tries to get different real estate, they call it, change levels. And then because you can't pick that one leg up, the other third man needs to come in and blade, they call it, whatever, but around two legs. And that's that's in a perfect sort of run. Yep. Then you got to try and get a Fanua Blake or a Payne Haas or Tina. And then you got to fucking manage. You got to mm. manage the tackle, right? Mm. That's why there's not many hits on those guys because imagine you're you're just say Tino's running at you and then bang late footwork Fanua Blake late footwork. You go from trying to hit him to being most the so hit goes from a shoulder tackle to an arms tackle. He's finding his front or an offload because you want to try and hit Fanua Blake. Mm. He wants you to try and hit him mm. because he knows. There's no fear factor in the game. This dude ain't going to put a shoulder through my head or, or my chest. No one's going to fucking fight me. There's no fear factor for a big, strong, physical specimen who's got a fucking – who's built like that. Got it all in No the one's going to fuck with a dude like that. Mm. That's why they're on 1.2 mil. That's why they're all changing the game. That's why everyone's trying to get a fucking Fanua Blake or a Payne Haas or a Tino because they can control the games. Yeah. There's no one can control touch outcomes. them, mate. They yeah. control outcomes. Like, why else would you pay the guys 1.2? Why else would we be chasing them like mm. that? Because they're the big dominant alpha male in there that can't be fucked with. That's why everyone's looking for those diamonds out there, man. Mm. Mm. You're right. Some really yeah. good points, mate. And it's not like the uh, the big dogs weren't important. Like, obviously, no, yourself. No, they've always, they've always Greg, been like always that, been. mate. I think for a couple of years, they went – they weren't as valued, but now well and truly they're coming back. Yeah, in the because look how hard it is to find a genuine yeah. fucking gun middle. 
that can play 60 to 60 to 70 minutes, 80 if you want him. There's probably – Be effective all the time, 90 fucking 5% effective tackling. Probably like eight or ten. This fucking hardly, I'd yeah. say about four or five. You think there's four or yeah. five? Yeah. I think Lindsay Collins has put himself in that position now. Yeah. I think he's a top five prop, top six. Okay. All right, let's get to the biggest news of the week, mate. Uh, the Rabbitohs have finally made the call on Jason Demetrio. Um, we talked about this last year with the Justin Holbrook news. Before we get into the details, like mm. who potentially could be taken over. Do you like the long – we're talking about wrestling – long, slow death that's happened to Jason Demetrio, <laughs> like happened to Anthony Griffin, or behind the back, Justin Holbrook, <laughs> you're done, Des has like you're in. What would you it. prefer if you're a head coach? Because I think I prefer I'd to be – I'd rather – yeah. Oh, Titsy, Justin yeah. Holbrook. Yeah. Just getting fucking, hey, you're out, son. Oh, oh shit. Was I? I, just I, got, I just thought I got my shit together. Yeah. Wow. What clause? What, what clause did I have in there again? Manager, what did you put that in, you yeah. idiot? Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think, yeah, I'd rather that. Or maybe, and, oh, geez, it's hard because then I think some clubs like South, a storied franchise, everything like that, giving a coach like Demetrio, got the, got the car, got the keys to the Ferrari, right, mm. last year. Yep. And they fucked it. Uh, Blake Solly said in the uh, press conference that he tr he was trying to give Jason Demetrio every chance, yep. right? And that's uh, what he got, and he deserved that, right? Yeah, yeah. Because he he's got the roster, you know, like Titans and everything. The roster was okay, and I thought I thought Holbrook got hard done by out there, to be honest. Mm. But it wasn't working out. Yep. And it was a bit. It's a bit deeper. I know the story at the Titans. It's a bit deeper than just the coaching. It wasn't the coaching. It was a lot of the other shit going on. Okay. Um. But Demetrio, he, you know, he's it just. Fell like so quickly. I've never seen a team just go from killing it. Like we're thinking that they're going to win the grand final last Mate, year. They were coming first at round eleven last so, year, around this know, time last year. Winning, it's crazy. I don't know, probably five games ever since. Yeah, it's not. It's not that good. So it was always going to happen. All right. So assistant coach Ben Hornby is set to stand in as club's interim coach. He's already made a whole heap of changes as well uh, for the uh, for the game, which we'll get What's to. He Mace. Done? Uh, he's moved. Uh, Jacob Gagai was supposed to be playing okay. the wing. He's moved Tass to the wing, Cheekamp to the centers. But we'll get to that when yeah, we break okay, down okay. the game. Uh, Wayne Bennett, who coached Rabbitohs between 2019-21, appears to be the favorite atop of the list of candidates, which include. Slam and Sam Burgess, coach of the Warrington Wolves. Madge has been tossed up, current coach of the New South Wales team. Justin Holbrook, we talked about him. He's an assistant coach at the Roosters. Uh, a couple of uh, candidates from the Super League and Steve McNamara, who was my interim coach Cat when Lance? I was at Catalans. Yeah. Yep, I like Stevie Mac too. Uh, he was assistant coach of the Roosters before he went over there as well. He's done his um, due, dil mm. due diligence yep. as well. Uh, actually, that's not the right. He's done his time, basically. Uh, Adrian Lamb is another candidate. And I think that makes a lot of sense for a couple of reasons. And then they've also chucked in Michael Checker, uh, who has yes. tossed his name up. He tossed his name up for the Tigers gig, and now he, he uh, you know, he coached Lebanon in the World Cup a, a couple of years ago. And I Maybe think he's got an interest in co coaching uh, in, in the mm. NRL. If you were to rank them in favourites, you yeah. top of your list. If you're a sorry, if you're a South Sydney fan member player, who would be your ideal candidate? Outside, outside of Wayne. Outside of Wayne. Yeah, well, that's that's mm. fucking hard, isn't it? Because he's he's the guy. But I don't, just, I'll just say quickly on Wayne. Like, of course, did he, he said that he'd be interested, right? Yes. Yeah, I know, but like, different. There's, it's a it's a big difference, man. Like he got him to four, what four years in a row? It was either the prelim or a grand final, and that was a totally different team. And now it looks like it's in shambles. I don't think Wayne's going to a team like that. It's still a good roster, mate, and it's pretty much it's pretty much the same roster that he had before he left. We, except now it's got Jack White, mm. and you don't think he can mm. get the best out of those players? Here's my thing with it, and this is what's been yeah. tossed up in the media. The, there's this thought process that Wayne's trying to stall it. This is a, this is media, me, yeah. bare media, but trying to stall it because there's also interest in him apparently from the Eels if the Eels job was to become available. Yeah. Now. If it's out of those, I don't know Wayne like those two Souths. I don't I don't I don't know I don't know Wayne like you. You've already said yeah. that it doesn't seem like it was big. But candidate. when you say the roster, right? You think yeah. it's better than it was when they got to the grand final? You think it's exactly the same? Obviously, without Adam Reynolds. Yeah, Ren's gone, so they're, they're missing a halfback. But that's who, about it? Who else? Who that's else about it. Yeah, really? That's it. Okay. Well, fuck. There, there could be some South fans yeah. screaming at us right now, throwing some names out there. But like, I felt like in the last couple of years they didn't lose anyone of note. Before the Adam Reynolds, like yeah, earliest yeah, change, yeah, yeah. Um, they're probably they're obviously bringing him in. You think he'd get he'd be able to get the best out of Latrell and Cody, obviously, because he's yeah. got a great relationship. He's the only one who can. Jack Whiten is a plus. That's a guy yeah. that he hadn't had, but he'd love Jack. He'd love Jack. He would love him. Yeah. Oh well, it seems makes makes more sense. Like if that. you're if you're Wayne, all right. Now this is your Wayne, and 
two jobs beca- do become available. Now, we know South is available, but there's all this chatter around Parramatta. You're looking at the rosters purely. That's it. Nothing else that's involved with it. Because when it comes to Wayne, whatever's the front office and that, he dictates. Like, he controls the yeah. team, right? He, he always controls yeah. the list. And then all the, other, all the other people that are involved who think they're involved, they're just in the back burner, mm. right? So you're looking at the two rosters, Parramatta and uh, Rabbitohs. Which one would you prefer? Rabbitohs. I think on para. He's not going out there. He's, yeah, but no, 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 even no. The roster, the rosters, South and Parramatta's roster is both pretty even. Yeah, that's my point. So, yeah. Yeah, so it'd just be preference now for him, and he knows he's comfortable at South, and he can know he knows the area, he knows how to get around, yeah. and he lives there. I know where he lives, and he's probably missing fucking. Barbarian, so he can get that mad fade. Because <laughs> <laughs> Armour cuts his hair. Yeah, I know. He, I know. Well, imagine trying to get – you've seen Wayne's hair? Yeah. There's about 10 strands of hair on his head. Yeah. Imagine yeah. trying to give him a fade. He goes, can't you just cut that, mate? Surely he's not – uh, I threw him in there. I should sh- go to see my mates. Sh- surely it's 20 of the best for a little trim. <laughs> I think I could cut Wayne's hair. <laughs> it's not that hard. <laughs> anyway, I think he's very familiar with the area. Yeah. You know, four years here. I remember seeing him down Ruby Junction <clears> in the Woolworths, and he's just part of the fabric, Danny. I think he probably misses that a little bit. Okay. Um. Mrs. Yeah. You, your coffee yeah, updates yeah, and exactly, mate. give us some good intel at I used to catch up a fair bit, mate. We yeah. used to sit there around and just go around for a fucking glass of water and just talk footy and life, mate. So it'd yeah. um, be good to see him get, get back there. I mean, because he's obviously leaving the Dolphins, right? Mm. There you go, Wolfie, have that. And then he's just got – he can choose whatever he wants. He can not coach again or he can go and coach Parramatta because I think a lot of teams, a lot of clubs are finding out, fucking not hard. It's not easy. Mm. Not easy being a head coach. And when you're Wayne Bennett, he makes it look easy. Yeah, he does. He does. He it's, does, mate. We've said now for the last couple of years, when you look at the Dolphins, clearly with the roster that they got, we don't have a lack of talent that could play mm. in the NRL. We've got a lack of top-tier coaches, coaching. Man. Here's a smoky for you. His name was chucked, chucked around. Melman Inga was tossed around, right? Yeah. And I don't think that's going to happen. But the current assistant coach for the Australian team with uh, Mel Inga is Adrian Lamb. Now, he's yeah, the current Lee Leopards Lamb. coach. Yeah. Um, and Adrian Lamb has been successful over there. He won a Challenge Cup with Lee Leopards. I think he might have won a Super League Grand Final with Wigan. He's done a lot over there. He's done a heap yeah. of coaching. And, and then playing. you still get the influence of Mel, obviously, with Adrian Lamb. I think that makes a lot of sense. And there's a part of me that thinks they went over to go sign this Lewis Dodd kid for the South Sydney Rabbitohs, right? He's a St. Helens halfback. But you can get that done fucking – sign a piece of paper and get the management to send over. I think they're looking for a coach over there. So my um, my guess would be it's either – I don't think they're going to get Sam. I'm obviously – Sam would do his two years over there. I reckon yep. if Wayne does two years and just say – and then would hand the reins to, to Sam. That would make sense to me. That's logical, right? Yeah, that because two years over there, Sam, you know, does he, makes his bones over there, wins some things, you know, gets used to, you know – Coaching professional men, yep. young men, and that's going to be the do, going to be the world do. Uh, hang on, do that again. That's going to fucking help Sam so much being those been over there for the last for the last two years, and then coming back, and then he can yeah. take care of it. You know, he's been out of sight, out of mind. Yep. Do you know what I mean? Like over here, is a lot of heat on him for some shit, but not really because <laughs> while this has been happening, know, everyone's been mentioning social media. Yeah. Because of social media, he's always connected to South, and he always will be. Yeah. And I just think that's a smart move from South. Get Wayne back for a couple of years, get some stability back. Yep. And then get the the favourite son back. Yep. I've got two options for you. My favourites would be, I think it's the most obvious one, obviously, is Wayne with the progression of Sam. And I reckon potentially he, this, he was going to be my thought on them travelling over. I think they've got to repair the relationship with Sam first, mm. the way he was disrespected by yeah. the club. And uh, he voiced his concerns that are airing out now. Yeah. They would have to go face to face and meet Sam and go, we fucked up. We want you back in some capacity at some time. I don't think they're going to get him in the next two years because we just we know no, Sam. I just, Sam's not the sort of guy to walk out of a contract. But he probably wants to be over there, right? He, he he's does. A fucking he's an he's enjoying he's it. He's a northern man. Yeah, he's I, a Yorkshire man. He's a Yorkshire lad, so he's on the other side. But yeah. for people that don't know, I we train with, with Biffa. Biffa, yeah. Biffa is uh, his brother Luke. He's loving it over there. Yeah, that's what and, I mean. I don't think yeah. you're going to be like, oh, Sam, come back. And he's just going to rush back because once yeah. you get over there and you've got a different mentality, you're in Europe, no pressure, all that kind of stuff, like living that sort of lifestyle instead of being in the bubble here, mm. living around the area, like he's he's probably going, oh, fuck, why didn't I do this earlier? And he's a man, like to my point, right, and you know this too, Mace, he's a man in principle. So yeah. they fucked him. They 
They treated him like shit. He ended up moving, going over to Warrington. If they were to get him back, they're going to have to go in person and go have a chat to him. Three or four years. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I reckon a couple. I reckon you're right, Wayne. And then if if it is indeed Wayne, then Sammy will be the uh, stability the, back. Maybe get him back for a bit to be assistant coach under Wayne for a year. Yeah, but, but pay him a shitload. Uh, yeah, I mean, while up. Wayne is fucking still yep. able to coach, he's getting up there. All right. Um, these are the two. So there's been a lot of chat around the kickoff and the concussion protocols. Now I've got a couple for you. This one's from Joel Kane, and he said this one on SEN. And sugar. I th- shout I, out to the sugar. Shout out to the sugar. And I think this is the best provo- proposal that keeps the kickoff in the game, but also ticks a few boxes for the – because there's so much – you know what it's like, mate. It's when there's all this commentary around, especially no. with journos, it builds momentum. They start leaking it oh, into. They keep fucking talking, mate. This is just the nature Fuck. of the world we're living in, right? So, Sugar proposed this: kick off stays in in play, but there's a pe- so if you can catch it in goal, then that's when the automatic tap would start. So, um, just say like uh, if you catch it in goals off a normal kick in play. Then you take it out to the 20 meter, it's a tap. So what that would do is it would get the kickers practicing rather than kicking it deep into the in goal lines, maybe dropping it like five meters short. So you'd have to get skilled at it as well. Therefore, we still got the contact of the kickoff for the most part, but you're taking away an extra 10 meters of off the back fence. So that's going to, um, I guess, tick the box for everyone who – You'd, you'd like to think that maybe uh, that drops the percentage mm. even lower than, that, than what it is right now, which is currently 3%. So it's crazy we're having this conversation, mate. It's fucked how but, – But I, th- I think it's important to know that – It's going to change? I think for the most part the higher-ups want to get rid of it. This is what I'm thinking. So why yep. else would a fucking little dude like Shamus come out and care about kickoffs? No, no, Shamus is a different one. Sorry, don't get that twisted. I'll get to Shamus in a bit. Shamus is a different proposal. I'll well, just do- say, like, even like anyone who is in the mainstream media, why the fuck do they care about kickoffs so much? It's part of our game, especially a guy like Joel Kane's played, right? So there makes me think that the higher ups is going, make sure you start putting this shit out and so they can control the narrative all the time. Talk about head knocks, talk about this shit so everyone can start fucking building up and building up, and making a big case of it. Otherwise, no one gives a shit. And if they're going to change it, just fucking change it. I don't even really want to have a point on it. Yeah, but see, this is the thing, right? We end up talking about it because it's topicals. People talk about it. So they're going to – so this is – do you want to hear Shamus' one? Yeah. So Shamus tossed up doing um, uh, a six-man bench. So, you know, uh, for instance, like if you lose Moses Sully, I I actually don't mind the idea as well. So in the Premier League, but you still only use four bench players, right? This way it gives you the opportunity if you lose Moses Sully at the start of the game, Mm. rather than having Tom Eisenhuth play 79 minutes and 50 seconds at left centre, you have an outside back for cover on the bench. Therefore, you lose a rotation of a back row or a middle, but you're not. So like if you look at the Penrith, um, you remember when Isaac Tonga absolutely drilled um, Parramatta and Broncos back to back when they yeah. lost Walsh. So you wouldn't have that. At the start of the game, you've got the opportunity to move a center into the centers and therefore not be purely uh, so uh, badly disadvantaged. Yeah, all right. I get it. It's, like, a, it's not a bad one. I'm eh? more, I just more like there's more onus on defenses. That's all it is. Okay. I, don't, I, I don't care about – like Suley just should have been in a better position. People off the kickoff should be in better positions. Like you just got to put more onus on that. I know mistakes happen, but it ha- fucking hardly ever happens – it doesn't happen every single game. People get knocked out on off the kickoff. Yeah, right. I look. There's been three. So, do you think the Dragons can beat the Roosters with Moses with Tom Eisenhuth in the centres? Pia Kuda played. No way. Pia Kuda played left centre for the Broncos against Penrith yeah. Panthers. Can they win the game? That's just no. like that's just the way the game. That's goes, just the way it goes. Mate. That's, the way okay. it goes. that's just right. the way it is. We can't yep. fucking just put oh make make it this happen just in case one of our fucking centres gets injured in the first hit up. Mm. That's on him. That's on the defender. All right. Just make sure you get like your tackle tech right. All right. You, usually, if, if, like, mistakes like that happen rarely, right? I think a lot of people will be a lot more fucking concentrated on tackle tech in those first couple of in those first five minutes. Now you can't just go out there crazy like that. Mm. You got to know what you're doing. So I don't think Moses Sully went out there crazy though. I reckon Jaden no, Sewell was the so one that either. was crazy. That's what I'm the, saying, like you got to yeah. put yourself in positions not to get in head knocks and stuff like that. How, I don't see it happen, mate. You can't prevent that though. Like we go out and we play, you're going to get head knocks. Well, I know regardless. that, but I'm just saying this may be more onus on Sully. Why isn't he dipping? Or why is why is Sewell rushing from that other side? 
Yeah. But that's shit hard. like that happens, right? I know it is. If, if he, he was in position and ready to go and he was dipping and fucking Sewer knocked him out of the way, so he gets knocked out. It's just the nature Sewer's of- Sewer's fucking fault. Yeah. I blame Sewer. I'm just thinking like I don't know how many times that I've done a kickoff or been in the, in the way there like that. Yeah. Like that, that I even got a head knock at all off a kickoff. Take yeah, fucking I hundreds of them. I never, I never did as well. Yes, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So there needs to be more like awareness when you're running down. Like, all right, I'm going. I got the ball. I got this. As I said before, it's like taking a fucking hit up off the nine. Like, just I don't know. There just needs to be more, more onus on defenders, and that's all they do in in um, NRL like systems now is defense. Mm. You would be. So, I'm surprised how many head knocks there are. Mm. I'm very surprised because that's all they do. It's fucking. 70% defense, mate. But I think I think the game's getting faster and faster and the athletes are getting fitter and stronger and therefore there's going to be more opportunities even though I think it's what we sign up for. It's a part of the game. Yeah. I just think if you had an option, I actually like the Shamus idea. I think it would be great to have – if I lost Moses Sully, if I lost Bailey Simonson for Parramatta and I got an option for a guy that probably wasn't going to play and then I've – if just say if everything goes well, I still use my normal bench rotation, which would normally be a hybrid fourteen, like your dummy yeah. half lock, and then you got uh, your big boys ready to go. But if uh, if an outside Bailey Simonson goes down, Moses Sully goes down, Reese Walsh goes down in the first ten minutes of the Broncos game against Penrith, then I go all right, let's chuck Tristan Saylor on at fullback rather than move and put Pia Kuda to the centers. You know that sort of that would yeah. but that that would be my proposal, and I think that would. L- l- give us a better quality of game rather than the blowouts that happen in all three of those games. Yeah. All right, this one is on the Roosters. Luke Keary has announced that he will retire from rugby league at the end of 2024 season. So, Kez made his NRL debut here for South Sydney in round nine of 2013, played 63 games, obviously won a GF there in 2014. Yeah. He played uh, 1,167 for the Roosters. Uh, Keary made his debut in the 2017 season. To date, he has played uh, – he has won two premierships with the Roosters, a couple of World Club challenges. He's obviously the, he? the Clive Churchill medal yeah. that that, uh, that stands out um, and, and everyone will talk about for years. Do you reckon that's one of the most – Which one? What? Talked about performances of all time because he, he – Cooper Cronk plays with the busted shoulder and Kiri gets Clive Churchill, completely c- controlled the game. Oh, you think it was a great performance or a bad – No, it? the most talked about. Oh, it was a great performance. Yeah, he won okay. the Clive Churchill yeah, on a team that with with a with a halfback with who uh, one 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 arm. Uh, it's great. Grab my got the, grab the half. <laughs> grab my strong, strong hand. Strong hand. <laughs> How bad was he? Remember, it just all come back with you, just like that. yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> Kiri, mate, what a great, what a great career. What, what a, a player. Great little career that he's fucking notched what up. What do you there. reckon? Well Kez done. lines up in in terms of like plays. Do you reckon he's in the uh, James Maloney sort of bit higher, bit higher than yeah. than Jimmy? He's played Test as. Remember, like just after 2017, he was a six for Australia. He and then he got, then he'd done his ACL, and Munster wasn't the six, mm. and he was nearly at the peak of his powers there. They were yep. coming up through the same sort of. He was just a little bit before money. He um, had all that origin dilemma too, right? Yeah. Because he was born in Queensland, but yeah. then moved to New South Wales. But geez, don't go there, Queensland. I think he. I think like he obviously wanted <laughs> to play for Queensland. Israel Folau. Remember he had the origin jersey on as a kid growing up. Queensland origin jersey. Yeah, he wanted to be a Queenslander, but he was eligible for New South Wales. So Let's that got messy for that. him, Let's right? <laughs> no, but like if, he, yeah. if he'd played okay. more origin games, then obviously – Yeah, I think yeah, I think injuries took its toll, head knocks took its toll, and I think he's tapped out at the right time. Yep. Health and wealth, I always say that. There's a lot, to, there's a lot more to life than just rugby league. You'll figure that out when he's retired at the end of the year. Great career, but yeah. he's done everything in the game. He's done every single thing that he could do. My little mate loves his golf too, so I think he'll be playing some golf. I think he'll be on the tour with like me, another, Wado. Did he sign another year? He did have year? one more year left, I think. So I, it's I, a, he's not medically retiring or anything. Like that. It'd be just a little conversation. Okay, yeah. Between um, it's not medically retiring. It's just him saying he's retiring. I think, but he, he has a year left. Yeah, I believe so. So, so he would have had a chat with the. Higher ups. And All right. Well, this one comes. This one comes from Jack. Uh, just walk away from a million dollars. Jack with. Uh, all right, boys, love the potty all the way from the UK. Got a question for the potty. Do you think the Chooks have convinced Kiri to retire due to the ongoing battle oh, uh, with uh, in the team with Walker and Kiri? Definitely not. Definitely not that. I just think he's just gone, can I do another preseason? Because the preseason is full of fucking absolute – sweat boxes and wrestling and collisions yep. and he's probably just done his research on his brain and his health and just looked at it and gone risk and reward 
I've done everything in the game. I can happily, financially, mentally get out of this game. Yep. Healthy and thank you, NRL. I'm done. All right. And, and also- probably had a sorry, and probably had a conversation with the Roosters and they're like, I'll get to what that. Yes, yeah. he just, just. I'll finish off what he yeah. said as well. Also, could you give them a shout out to the mighty Warrington Wolves, coached by Slam and Salmon? Yeah. They're in the Challenge Cup semi final in a couple of weeks, and Shit, Sammy and the boys need a boost because they've had a couple of rough performances. Maybe the South News is getting a big <laughs> slamming over there. Uh, big, lo- big love, boys. I'm immigrating to Australia at the end of the year as I'm transferring from the Royal Navy to the Royal Australian Navy. I hope to catch you guys around the grounds. You probably won't, but uh, <laughs> uh, good to see you over here uh, and in the Royal Australian. Australian Navy. Mate, to your point, um, just at the start of it, no, I don't think he would have been pushed out by any means. But uh, the part that I was critical of Robbo a couple of weeks ago with not being able to make strong decisions with uh, senior players, Mm -hmm. sometimes at the Roosters, which has been a criticism I generally have of him, this is the positive of Robbo. This is the positive and um, you can tell that Robbo has genuine care for a lot of those boys that have been part of these premiership winning teams for him. So to be able to have conversation with Kez – Throughout this process, he wouldn't have made this in one week. He would have had a chat to Robbo over the space like of maybe last three year, to man. four months, maybe. No, even last year when he was going through all that shit, right? Like True. Was, that would have been on his head last year. You can't honestly not say that because if his two of his best mates have been medically retired from that as well. Like, be doing, be, be fucking thinking about that shit every day. Yep. And this is where the and this is where it comes back in. This is where like Robbo. Uh, the relationships, this is a, where it's a bonus, where you can sit down with Kieran and go, like, let's look at all things considered. Age, um, f- the future of the club, you know, Sammy Walker, you know, is he going to take over and be the guy? Do we have someone in mind? And when you have respect for the coach, like Kiri would have, like Boydy Cordner would have, all yeah. these greats that have played for the club, yep. you can have a proper conversation, be uh, level-headed about it, and work together in a world in which it, benefits both parties. And I think there's a world which Kez is involved in the club moving forward, just like Boydie, just like so Jakey friendly. Friend. Yeah. Uh, just forever. Like they'll be there. Brett they'll, Morris. Be, they'll be like that forever. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I don't think it's much more than that. I think it's a decision between grown ass men yep. and they're going, all right, I'm done. Yep. I agree. How old, how old is Kez now? Kez would be 30, 31, 32. Yeah. You know. He's played a lot of football, 200 games. He's played a fair bit, man. Yeah. The what a career. Already, well done, Kez. Well done, um, we lost some – look, and, and – That's and happening la- now. Last couple of weeks yeah. we've lost uh, Fanuk and, and Kiri and those guys have had their fair share of concussions over the years. So you can see there's a bit of a – Changing in the guard. A man. change into the guard. Some guys that have played a lot of footy as well. That, Which that is obviously a plays great them. thing for everyone, for yep. the game and even young kids come through the through the ranks because, um, you know, third. I mean, some people get blessed to be – Playing like Cam Smith, but he made that shit look easy. Man. Yeah. He was so – technically he was yeah. so smart with the way he played with the ball and defensively that he Beautiful. was able to play for so long. It is uh, that time of the month and that time of the month is – it's a new month. Right. It's May. So let's – with the RLPA, we've been giving our player of the month nominees. Okay. Uh, so let's go through the April nominees kicking off. I'll give you one. I'll give you one. Go, who you got? Reese Walsh. That's, no that's Reese Walsh. The, he's not there? No Reece Walsh. He's been the best player in the last month. <laughs> he missed games. He only played two games. Two's back. enough, man. <laughs> two. <laughs> For the other guys, they've played four. So they're going to be – Lomax has got to be up there. Lomax is in there. He's got a Bron- Broncos teammate that's a part of it though. Who's your guy in the middle? Carrigan. Paddy Carrigan. Tough Carrigan. Jeez. There we go. All right. Paddy Carrigan's a part of it. Jerome Hughes from yes, the Melbourne Storm yes, yes, was outstanding. That's fair. That's fair. And Nicholas Hines put together two really big performances late. That's fair. Uh, even though they were critical of him getting points in the South game, which he probably might have got with some people. Uh, the candidates for April are Paddy Carrigan, Jerome Hughes, Nicholas Hines, and Zach Lomax. That's for fair. people to vote on, uh, for the players to vote on for the player of the month. So congratulations to those guys and good luck. Um, gut feeling, who do you think? I thought I on? nailed it with Reese Walsh. Yeah, you thought you killed it. Just the last two games, got the, been yeah. killing it. Yeah. I think he's uh, played too. Was Canberra his first game back? I don't know, but last week, the first half was enough. But you know me. the problem with the – so for Paddy as well, like – Adam Reynolds has played really good mm. in a couple of those games. Walshy has been outstanding. But Paddy, I think for me, I had him as my Especially, number two. Yeah. He just got two points, two points, two points. Especially you know. Paying out. Yep. Um, who do you think wins out of those four? I reckon Nico. He's Nico? been good the last couple of weeks. Yep. Do you reckon it's more of the recency bias too? Yes. Because he was quiet the first two weeks. Of yeah, and then April. he got hammered a little bit by the media for like because he got a couple of points in votes. the game. Yeah. It's not his fault. I actually seen uh, right. Lukey sent us a clip that he had on uh, 
Triple M talking about how it affected him. In yeah, the I watched that. Year. That was good. It was, that was pretty. It was pretty real. Very honest. Very yeah, raw. Yeah, because he only played fucking what eight minutes of that Origin. Yep. And he remembers every single minute. Because there's some fucking big, <laughs> some big things that happen in eight minutes. Might have, might have watched that over a couple of times as well. <laughs> yeah. um, what about He's his point in playing um, centre and, and the difference between playing centre and, and yeah. six? Eh? It's, it's big, a big difference. difference. He's defending like you said. He's defending like a half, just being tucked in too far to the Dipping a little man. bit too yeah. early. Yep. And you got more room as a seven. It's once five metres, sure. but it's fucking like an island out there, man. That next spot out is just proper one on ones. Yep. Twenty metres. If you get those guys like Cobo and fucking Val Holmes, money coming Hammer. at you. Will you get caught on your heels? You're yep. done. Game over. That's how quick they are, man. All right, let's get to uh, the preview of the games. Before we start that, we're going to kick it off with our Levels Bets Friends special. Last week, we saluted. We went overs in the Manly game versus Parrot. Yeah. That was always going to be overs. Mm. And we got Tommy Turbo who scored in the first 60 minutes. So we're going with that market again with our friends at the tab. So I'm going to go to the Titan Storm game. It's going to be overs. Uh, we got over 44 and a half. And I've got Brimo or Pappy to score in the first 60 yeah. minutes. So we've got the two fullbacks who are in red hot form as well. Uh, for $3.75 from the traders with a max bet of yeah. $25. Melbourne so we're usually good like that. When they start putting points on, they'll put that on for about six weeks. Is I agree. You yep. Yeah. Exactly Once my thought process. they got 50-something, I'm like, all right, they build into that 50. So they had a couple of low games. Yep. All right, let's get to breaking down the games. Right. And I've got to update it because there's some huge news overnight with South Sydney changing their lineup as well. Like I said before, Ben Hornby has come in and uh, moved a few pieces around. So Jacob Gray Guy is out. Tass moves to the wing. Cheekam goes from the back row to centres. Kalawa Mantungi moves back to the second row, which is great. Great. He should have been there from the start. Dry Arrow uh, now starts in the front row and Kepi has been recorded. As for the Panthers, Nathan Cleary has been ruled out for precautionary reasons. Obviously played up in North Queensland last week. Probably going to be pissing down with rain. I know it's cleared up now, but uh, it looks like that's going to, that forecast is supposed to be going. So um, Brad Snyder comes in the half and Jack Cole is on the bench. Uh, so he's the guy they're talking about as a potential okay. replacement. For he's the white? For the Luai. Yeah, right. He's the name that I keep hearing yeah, that everyone keeps yeah. tossing up that he could be a, a genuine option. So um, our friends and partners at the tab have the Penrith Panthers – Dollar twenty six favorite South Sydney at three dollars ninety at home. The line has come in from I think it was fifteen or sixteen at one point, all the way into eleven and a half now for the Penrith Panthers. All I know is this game's going to suck because the weather's going to be awful. It's at Homebush. It's tonight. It's dewy. It's 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 not going to be a, a entertaining game. And if it's going to come down to a grind, mm. who can grind with the best of them? Penrith. Mm. Regardless if they're going, oh, it's a new coach. They always win. Fucking all these little stats and shit. I don't care. Penrith or Penrith. Was against someone else, I'd, I'd sort of go near those things, but like, and if they had Latrell, and if they had Latrell as well, yeah, why? But like with South, because you know it's like Penrith, they're not gonna, no, they don't give, give a shit, man. Yeah. they don't fall into that crap, they yeah. just come in there and they just want to, they take it personal. The Schneider's gonna come in, he's gonna, you know, he, he's not gonna rock the boat, he's gonna do what he like. Remember, I tried to go against Penrith that one time, and Schneider come in, they fucking pump Melbourne. I'm like, come on. Like, how does it happen? No, they pump the roosters. The roosters, roosters, sorry. I'm like, it's just like clockwork. I'm like, yeah, that four pack is still the same. Mm. Try and beat that. Yep. That's where where their weakness is, South. I agree, mate. I've gone Panthers a minus 11.5. By the sounds, you're on the same. You you agree? Uh, $1.85. And he's been showing some bounce. There's all this chat around Nico. At the moment, Jerome Luai, anytime try score, three dollars seventy five. I think this is game. It's all right, man. He maybe gets on a scrappy kick, maybe maybe a lost ball, maybe uh, kicking to the to the three man. Someone yeah. comes it back, maybe well, one of those little tries. Well, who's going to go for that? Um, this little try. I mean, who's going to be the six for New South Wales? We have got Nico locked in, haven't we? Who's the other two? Luai and Cody. Yes, Cody's the incumbent. Ooh, yes. Let's Great look point. at this. Let's look at this game, right? Yep. And go, okay. Well, whoever gets the nod on this game, if Cody has a big game against the team. But Cody needs fucking to be painting like Cody Walker to get that blue spot back. Yep. Because Nico's got something to say. All right. The Seagulls play the Raiders tomorrow uh, at 6 p.m., the first game of Friday night. Uh, the Seagulls, the Daly Cherry Evans uh, will be playing. Nice he had that. a successful um, downgrade on his charge for a dangerous throw. Uh, T. Sips is back. Toa Fafoa Sipley is back as well. He will return on the bench. As for the Raiders, Elliot Whitehead will return. Albert Hopper Whitey moves the fullback in place of Chevy Stewart. Uh, and Nick Kotrick comes in on the wing for James mm. Schiller. Our partners and friends at the tab currently have Manly $1.26 favourites. 
The line is 12 and a half. So do you think Manly are going to win 13 plus? Canberra at $3.90 if you think they Where's can win Where's it as underdogs. Four points, Manly. Yeah. Oh, man. I think I think they can. Yeah. Because you got DC. If they didn't have DC, you're going to miss Ola Kawatu, but he hasn't been that damaging of late. Um, yeah, I think they can really dust Canberra. My concern is the weather. I think that plays into yeah. Canberra's hands, the weather. But I'm still going Manly. Yeah. 13 plus? Is that, is that 13 th- plus. I think I can get 13. I don't think 13 plus is a big deal these days. Mm. It's not a big deal. You get to hold it tight and then it's one, one, you know, two or three tries at the back. It always happens, man. Do you agree with my concerns on Manly playing in yeah. that sort of weather, though? Yeah, but that yeah. ground's mad. It's not yeah, it fucking is. 2006. You're right. The ground is – Bookie ain't the dirty little thing it was fucking 10 years ago. How bad was that ground? Oh. When it was like – if we were talking about Four Pines now – in 2008, 9, 10, or whatever, until It'll last year. Camera, until eh? last year. Yeah. It was the worst ground. Yeah. It's thick. And if you're a Manly player, you love it, right? Back in those days. Chocky and Killer and all those blokes and all those We guys. had the love sort it. of it team was, for yeah, it. Yeah, it was yeah. thick and like, yeah, it was just yuck. Jason King, Kitey, big like, sort it. of. They love Brookie. Yeah. I used to love playing at Brookie as well. Yeah. But you'd, you'd warm up out the back and then, or maybe on the field, and then get on that field I don't care how fast you feel, <laughs> you are fatigued in five minutes. Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with my legs? So yeah. That's why you try and you try and warm up on the field most of the times. And they wouldn't let you warm up on the field. Yeah. Now it's a fast pitch. Now it's one of the best pitches in the game. So yep. um, so I'm not concerned about the ground. I love what Turbo's doing. And Same. I think he's coming into his own. He's coming into his own. He's really putting that foot down. And um, you know, he's he's changing games by himself pretty much. Love it because I'm on Manly minus 12 and a half. So give me Manly 13 plus and Tommy Turbo as my anytime try scorer. Only $1.95, but I think he gets the job yeah. done. Uh, moving on to the Broncos versus the Roosters up at Suncorp. Now, this is probably the game, the game. of the round. Ezra Mam and Selwyn Cobbo both return. Ooh. Jordan Ricky suffered a facial cut of training, but he should be sweet. Still a good with sort. Corey Oates, <laughs> still way better sort <laughs> than us. Uh, Roosters, Victor Radley has been included in the reserves. It could be a late inclusion at the expense of Siwa Wong. Uh, and also, Daniel Tupo returns on the wing. Therefore, Michael Jennings, who I think was going to miss some time with an injury yeah. anyway. Joseph Swadley goes back to the centres. Mm. It's a good game, man. It's yeah. a little Littman's, Littman's test for the Roosters. Do you want to know the odds, mate? Yep. $1.45 favourites, the Brisbane Broncos with the tab. $2.75, the Sydney Roosters. The line is 7.5. It's a juicy line. It's a very juicy line. Do you think the Broncos are going to beat them by more than a try and a bit, basically? I don't know if they're going to win. Yeah. Yeah, that's so what I'm looking at. So then you probably like the I'm points. Like, is, I, don't, I want to know if Victor Radley's playing. You know, like, that's that's the mail. I want to know that. All right, let's see if we've got any updates. We don't here. have any mail, but I'm, all right, I'm going to go to the Roosters. Sometimes we sometimes we get this late because we, for those that don't know, we film uh, Thursday morning and sometimes the list change by the time the episode comes out and everyone's like – I'm going to the Roosters. Go on the Roosters. Yeah, yeah, I just think Victor Radley's think. currently still in the 22 jersey, but I think he plays if they've named him. Yep. Um, I'm against you on this one. I'm yeah. going the Broncos minus seven and a half. And if I can get – Make two, it interesting. Go if on. I can get – we talked about like, pretty looking humans with pretty Ricky. <laughs> pretty Ricky. There's a, glamour, there's a glamour at the back of the uh, – playing fullback with a cut on his face is still looks sexy as hell. Uh, and the price is sexy as hell, $2.40 about yeah. Reese Walsh anytime try scorer. I think – Revenge game for round for round zero for these boys. Um, they're my team to win the competition. This is a statement game, and I still have my concerns on the Roosters. Still, yeah, against the big guns. So, so do I, so do I just think this might be this. This will be the game. This right? will be an important yeah, month for the Roosters. Nine. It's round nine. Yep. All right, let's get to Super Saturday. Kicking off with the Bulldogs versus the West Tigers at a core again. This could be ripped up by the time they play as well with the game happening here. Rabbitohs versus well, Panthers. Be. If you think. If you think that's going to be ugly, probably 3 p.m. Saturday is going to be ugly, mate. But it's your Bulldogs, and I like the way your Bulldogs are looking at the moment, mate. And they get Jacob Preston back. Uh, well, it looks like he's in the extended mm. bench. Therefore, if he was to return, Jamin Salmon would move from the edge most likely to lock. Kurt Mann would drop back to the bench. Connor Tracy is again playing fullback with Blake Taff on the extended bench. Now, Avery Coruscant didn't finish the game last week with a back injury, but oh, he is still have named. Have the week off, Appy. Have the week Origin's off, Origin's coming up, man. We need you, bro. <laughs> Far out. Just rest up. They've got Jake Simpkin on the extended bench just in case, mate. Yeah, um, well, I'd like to see Appy just sitting in, sitting on the bench near me. I'll tell you what. chat. I'll tell you what. The Bulldogs, I don't think – when was the last time we seen the Bulldogs? $1.42 favourites. Fuck, we $1.42. Tigers yeah, are $2.90. Yeah, dog. Yeah, yeah, dog. dog. Yeah, dog. Minus seven and a half of the dogs. Um, yeah, right. I like us, man. I, yeah. I, don't, I like how we're – 
we're just turning up, man. Yeah. We're, we're hustling. We're gritty. We're turning up. I can see some consistency. I can see the detail, yeah. you know, all coming through and what's been happening um, last couple, for the last 18 months. Um, so I'm so happy for the Bulldogs as well. Like, you know, when we do a show with you, mm. it's very hard because you're a Bulldogs legend yeah. and you're still an ambassador and you do some stuff with yeah. the juniors. So it's hard to be – for you to be critical yeah. of uh, – the one thing that I seen at the start of the year was a real want to work for each other, and we're that's definitely seeing that now. Use the scoring points. See that shit. That see that. Like when coaches hear that, like just say the Bulldogs coaches, they love that because yeah. that's what coaches want to hear. Because yeah. that's what they're trying to get those guys on yes. the same page. So when you hear other footballers going, "Fuck, they look uh, connected. Yep. They look like that. They look this. It's like, that's what they're trying to be like. Yeah. And for you to say that, and even guys like Rennie, who are fucking harsh. Harsh taskmasters, sure. right? And a very harsh on the current Bulldog squad. Yep. All the ex-players, guys that are fucking, you know, my generation. When they say stuff like that, it means a lot. It's right? the highest praise. Yeah, it's the yeah. highest praise from former players and even current players and whatever. They're going, okay, they look connected. Mm. They look like doing stuff for each other because yeah. every coach would want their team to look connected. Yeah, for sure. And that's what's happening now. Because so attack will come. keep working on that. Attack will come mm. and it is now coming for them. Um, yeah. I watched the Matty Johns late night show on Sunday after the games and uh, Stephen Crichton and Jacob Kras were on. Yeah. One thing I noticed. Kras. Kras is fucking hilarious. <laughs> yeah. He's a gun and he is yeah. – you know what? You need a strong Lebanese presence for the Bulldogs. You do. <laughs> we always do. Has you do, it. mate. You do Go with the fan base. Karaz, man, just pass the baton off. I think it's important because you've got such a strong Lebanese fan base, yeah, so that's bro. another underrated part yeah. of – and when Karaz is a proper gun too, yeah. then obviously, you know, they rally behind him. Mm. But the main part I took out of it was – Stephen Crichton is a man. Yeah, he's so three. Stephen Crichton has been on the scene now for what? Four or five four, years. years. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes we look at players that hit the scene so early like him, Suali'i, you know, all these players. I probably think like even Sabi showing glimpses of it for, yeah. for Manly. They hit the scene when they're 18, 19 because they're just genetically gifted. Yeah. I'm looking at Stephen Crichton now and I never thought him as a kid, but he is a fucking man <laughs> he's now. He's big man. And he's, you can tell he's having an impact on that team. I love the way he talks. Mm. I love the way he's just got a presence about him. And... Give a hundred percent of the credit to, or oh, give a lot of credit to Cameron Serraldo, but I reckon Stephen Crichton's in. in uh, he, he's put a lot of belief in this team as yeah. captain, and he's 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 a candidate for captain of the year so far for me already. Yeah. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see we what happens. Eight. If we make the eight, he's, he should get it. He'll be right up there. Yeah. He'll be right up there. Um, yeah, he's been really good, and he's got no ego, mate. They talked about moving positions and playing fullback. He always says the right things. He looks like he's a team player. Team really first, impressive. Man. He's a yeah, really impressive. He's very um, impressive player. human. Um, I like your uh, I like your Bulldogs, mate. Um, I've gone them minus seven and a half, and I got some value. And he's sort of guy. He hasn't been talked about as much, and I think he likes it this way. Matty Burton. Yeah, he hasn't had him. No one's really talking about Matty Burton. Everyone's talking about kicks. Everyone's talking yeah. about Sherry. Everyone's talking about he's Connor the Tracy link, doing man. the job. He's the dude. If you give me five dollars for Matty Burton anytime try score a three o'clock right palm, bang, game over. Give me that. It's one of my favorite bets of the weekend. It was show and go for kicks. Love it. Get that little jousting or, stick or maybe out. maybe he plays short, wraps around, little offload, something. something like that. That's the way. Well, maybe short anyway. dummy to the open, go the blind. Love it. <laughs> Burrow Love over. It. I think you might score a couple. Anyway, um, Be good. speaking of strong ball running five eights, there's none better in the game than my little mate Cam Munster, who will play his two hundredth game Big one. Uh, for the Melbourne Storm against the Titans. Uh, up there at Gold Coast at Seabass Super Stadium. So for the Titans, they lose Mo Fodder Waker, which is a huge out. Uh, Joe Stimson will start at prop. David Feeder is named to start, but we know he loves coming off the bench. <laughs> As for the Storm, now it's in the He's soft like, for no, Solomon. No, 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 no. <laughs> Not against 200 game Melbourne. Yeah, they don't lose these games. Yeah. They get up. This, this is the team that get up for all these little things. Yeah, I agree. You know, the individual accolades, the 200 gamers, the 300 gamers, the 250, the 100. They never lose them, mate. Mm. It doesn't feel like and it does Especially it. for a Cam Munster doing his, having his 200. Yeah. The amount of effort that would be put into that. He's going to go hard, eh? Just from everyone else, man. He's going to – we know what Cam Munster can do. It's just mm. everyone else putting in that extra effort for him. That's, yep. how much, that's how much respect he's held in down there. All right, Nelson Asafa Solomon has been named, but he come off the Anzac Day test. We look like he'd done his hammy, so I'd be surprised if he Jeez. plays. As for – you mentioned Matt Guy before. Do you reckon the modern-day Matt Guy for the Melbourne Storm is Tyron Wishart now? Yeah, he's playing on the wing. He's he plays everywhere. six. He plays hooker. Is he but on the wing? He's on the wing this week for oh, Xavier wow. Coates. Like I, would be, I would be surprised – if Suofalonga was not part of this lineup. And why hasn't he been? 
because Ryan Pappenhausen plays fullback for him. Okay, but we can't put him at 14, eh? So I think, hard. I think they could. So I think maybe we see Falong at 14 as cover, but I wouldn't be surprised maybe they give him a go on the wing over Tyron Wishart. What do you mean? Yeah. Just put him in. I know um, the Wishart name is strong on the wings, no, but Tyron Wishart's more of a – He's a hybrid. Uh, hybrid to the middle. Seven. He can play anywhere. It's probably going to be to his fault as well. Yes. He'll be one of those you know, players. He's going to play 100 games and we don't know what position. He probably played five in each. All right. So the Melbourne Storm are $1.18 favorites, obviously. The Gold Coast up. Titans are $4.80. The Lion is 14 and a half. I think it's going to be a touch-up as well, Mace. And I've got to go to the money man on his 200th game, Cam Munster, $3.10. I was furious I didn't have him last week when he crossed over. And he was going after that game. Minus 14 and a half the Storm as well. Moving on to the last game of Super Saturday, we have the Cowboys at home to the Dolphins. Hylam Lukey Stowe is named to play with his return on the bench coming at the expense of Jake Granville. Viliami Vilea, I'm really excited to see him play. I think he's a real player um, or he's a player that can really insert himself on this lineup with a big game because Tom Chester has done his hamstring and he is out. Yeah. As for the Dolphins, they've got a couple of big names coming back too. Felice Kafusi is back. Connolly Limuelu. Um, Jesse Bromwich has been named, but he was 50-50 at the back end of that game as well against, who do they play? The Knights? Um, which could see Mattis Wallace uh, of the Jared variety back in the team yeah. as well. Um, the Tab have this game at $1.40 Cowboys, $3 Dolphins, and the line is eight and a half. I, don't, I think if they can capitalise off a little bit of good form last week mm. against Penrith yep. and just start off with that sort of energy – and, and and attack like that and defend like that for eighty minutes they'll get this game because yep, they nearly got they nearly got Penrith that mm. that fucking intercept before half time and a couple little soft tries Vi- uh, two the, minutes one in off the kick you know what I mean like Velame drops that ball yeah, Martin scores they that win was the, the difference. game so um I think they can just if they grow off that they can uh, make a run for it yep I agree I have got the Cowboys minus eight and a half and I do like Viliami Vilea as yeah. well so give me have him some people missing for Origin so they need to grab these fucking points now yeah for Otherwise, sure they'll really fall down. Um, all right, moving on to the Knights versus Warriors at McDonald's James Stadium on Sunday at 2 p.m. Jacob Saifidi is in doubt, therefore Jack Hetherington <laughs> is, 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 is back from suspension, so he could likely swap in for him. Um, the Warriors are set to run as per program with Bunty of Fire set to play after missing some time, and Kirk Capewell was also back. Uh, our partners and friends at the tab have the Newcastle Knights $2.35 underdogs at home. Dollar sixty favorites the Warriors despite the poor form of recent times yeah. and the line is minus four and a half. How do you see this game going? I like the Warriors you? still. Yeah, I, just, I just feel like they're not that far away. They they've lost some big games at home, which is very it's just it's just really weird how they've lost them. They just feel like they they're in the game and they just seem to lose it. Mm. And it's defensively. Yeah, it's defensively. Nothing's in attack. They're just leaking soft. Tries. So the last three games, the Manly game where they should have got beaten, they, yeah. they yeah, they're it, lucky they got one point off They that. call it back to one point. Then they get hammered by the Dragons at win, and you said they're yeah. hard to beat down at win, Dragons. Remember? Yeah. And, uh, and then a poor performance at home against the Titans who hadn't had a win. But the Titans were great, but it's still – they hadn't won yeah. all year. So I had the Knights last week, and I was happy with getting the win, but – Nothing like a road game up in Newcastle. Yeah, it's going to be hard, man. Yeah, because Newcastle aren't—they're not—they're not giving up on their season because of KP. No way. They'll probably think you know, like Hastings has got another chance to impress and gamble and all these guys. Like we, you know, get you know, they got to galvanize and um, games like this can really, you know, like last week can really galvanize them going into this week, right? And then yep. you know, like how do the Warriors? What are the Warriors made of, right? We're going to fucking see it in the next couple of weeks because mm. they've had some poor, poor defeats. And poor performances. Like they've got all the all the attack in the world. They just need to get their shit together yep. in defense. Because that's what wins competitions. If they want to be a threat at the end of the year, get that shit together. Yep, I'm with you. My uh, Warriors minus four and a half. Chance Nickel Clockstad got me uh, any time try score at the start of that yeah. game. So I'm like, gonna go like double up on him. Just, man. It'd be a tough game. Tough game. All right, the last game is the Cronulla Sharks at home in the derby against the Dragons. Toby Rudolph comes back into the bench at the expense of Taku Hau Tapuhu. Topuha. Uh, the Dragons, Luciano Lanoa is set to return from injury. Therefore, Ben mutters Masilla would likely be the player that drops out. With Moses Sully missing out, Zach Lomax goes back to the centres. Uh, Mace. Mm, it's be hard. Cronulla, $1.20. Dragons, $4.50 underdogs. The line is 13 and a half. Do you think the Sharks are going to beat them 13 plus? Yeah. 
Do you? Yeah. So do I. I thought you were going to say yeah. the opposite. <laughs> I just think the Sharks are just in a real purple patch, man. Yep. They're just playing some really good football and – yeah, I think um, the Dragons will cop this one. For a few people, the jury is still out on the on the Sharks. They think they haven't really beaten top quality teams, and I can understand that as well. I've sort of been a little bit the same. Like I've been yeah. on the Sharks, but like look at their wins. So they've obviously the Raiders without Fogarty, they hammered them. The Cowboys is a pretty good form line. Forty two six against them is that's still a good Cowboys team. Mm. Um, against the Rabbitohs with all that shit that was happening to Jason Demetrio, obviously. Uh, and then the Raiders 36-22 when the Raiders win in that game 18-0. So the Dragons, the Sharks have uh, the Dragons, which is a derby. I think the Dragons will be up yeah, for it. The, yeah, the, um, the Flano mm -hmm. um, uh, shit talk, which I think is going to go against them, I'm by gonna, the way. I'm going to... I'm gonna swap. I'm gonna swap. Are you gonna go, swap? Go, I'm gonna go the dragons. I didn't mean to talk you out of it, but because I'm no, actually just, on the sharks I myself. Think, like, I just think St George has got something. Okay. And they've got a good upset in them, you know. And I just think they got they got they got enough tools there to win and enough motivation. You know why I think they've got to beat them. So they play the dragons this week. Shano's talk, uh, Flano's talked a little bit of shit in the presser as well. Yeah. So I think that'll add See how much to. I love their coach. Eh? Then they've got to go in rounds 10, 11, 12, going into Origin, Storm at Melbourne. Roosters at home, Panthers at home. Mm. So they have to win this game. Yeah. And it's a derby. It's always fucking hard. Yeah. So I'm going to go. I'm on the mate, obviously. You uh, going to go St. George? No, nah, I'm on the oh, I'm, I'm good, on the shark. Good, yeah, that's good. what I mean. I didn't mean to talk you out of it as well. Uh, and no, I'm going to go. Just to, I just feel like they're, they're all right, St. George. They're yeah. Better than last week. Yes, they that are. That was disgraceful. Yeah, I still think the Sharks are just going to get that line right at the end. Right. Uh, Nico Hines, anytime try scorer at $3.75. Uh, as always, we want everyone to be gambling safe during the footy season. So please, please keep front of mind, what are you really gambling with? Free and confidential support call 1-800-858-858. OG, right. another good show. Yeah. Enjoy the footy right. over the weekend, everyone, and we'll see you on Monday for the review.